Hi and welcome to the 7 tutorial. Firstly in this tutorial I just want to point out a few small things which I missed earlier. Uh, as most people probably know if your toolbar looks a bit different to mine what you can do is right click and choose whichever appropriate setting you'd like to have. I personally like to have the icons so I'll just keep the icons up there. Also in the viewer uh, you might have noticed four little buttons uh, running along the center and you're probably wondering what to do. Well, the first one is basically just a normal render viewer. Uh, the second one, as you can see here, you're able to interact with the elements uh, by clicking on them and dragging them around. However, I don't really like to do that too much because you kind of it's not as accurate and you kind of lose values. Um, this one is the debug mode, which you'll be able to see what's going on in your composition when you're interacting with it. So at the moment, we just see the 3D transformation working. And it's been lit up uh, like a Christmas tree, really. And yeah, I don't tend to use this too much as it sometimes causes my uh, compositions to crash. Uh, the final one with the magnifying glass is basically a monitor, really, which shows the activity in your composition. And of course, it tends to spike whenever you have uh, high intensive uh, patches being used, such as inertia in this case. And you also get to see a number of patches, which is quite handy just to manage your document or your composition with. So let's dive into the composition. Um, so what we're going to do is go straight into our 3D transformation, which holds all our elements. And this should all be quite familiar to you. But there is one thing there I just want to change quickly, and that's the transparency of the icons that come out from behind the avatar. In the Facebook Home uh, website, uh, they're slightly transparent, so I'm just going to lower the transparency from 1 down to 0 0.85. And if we have a look at this, you can see that the icons are slightly transparent now, which is more like the end product. Also, what I want to highlight is the ability to add notes within a composition, and this can uh, kind of group together uh, various patches, especially if your document's getting larger. And what you can also do is just rename the note. So, for instance, I call this icons, and you can also add another one if you want, um, wherever you want in the composition. And it basically just makes everything a little bit neater and it's a small bit like having folders in Photoshop maybe. So you can just rename it to call time. And also you can change the color. So for instance I'm going to change this one to green. And it might look like a bit of a mess but you can you know do whatever you want and you can add another note on top of a, a base note and just make it look a little bit prettier. Uh, and also Using the command F function, which is uh, universal across um, uh, OS X to find things, and this can come in very handy in Quartz Composer when you want to find particular patches or notes, and you just do a quick command uh, find to look for a particular note, and it just makes everything much easier. And you can do this through patches too, and come up and in out of uh, patches and look for something which might take you quite a few clicks otherwise. So what we're going to do now is create a call notification and we're just going to basically create a new macro patch and rename it to notification. Once we go inside it we're just going to get a few patches together. Uh, first one is going to be a new one called keyboard which is very basic but um, handy patch. Also we're going to get a sample and hold. And finally a billboard. Just going to get rid of that and line them up. So we're going to drag in our image which is call.png. So throw that in there and start making our connections. So we're going to hook up the call image to the corresponding image port on our billboard. 
we're going to change the width to 0.6. Um, so what we need to get next is inertia and we're just going to find it by uh, looking for the X position which is in the patch above notifications I'm going to copy it and go back to our notifications patch by looking for the call image which takes us right back into it quite quickly and easily and we're just going to paste it in there and rename it So we're just going to start making uh, some more connections here and get our notification to move. So we're just going to hook up the right arrow key to value and sampling. Connect that value to the value of our inertia. And also we're just going to edit the um, source 1 uh, value to uh, minus 0.8. I'm going to go back up and connect the output to X position. So if we press the uh, right arrow key, we should get some sort of movement, and we do. However, the notification is coming out under our mask. So what we're going to have to do is go up and make this mask wider. First of all, we're just going to change the friction to something uh, higher, so there's uh, a little bit less bounce. And also we're going to bring the stiffness down to 50. Once we go up high enough in our uh, stack, we're going to just change the values of our sprite. Make it a little bit wider. And once you think it's wide enough, you can play with the values yourself and suit your own composition. We're just going to drag the X position slowly until it comes out of view. So we're just going to test our uh, changes in inertia. And it's a little bit slow at 50. So we're just going to change it to about 70 and we can do this by uh, using the command F and jumping straight into our uh, notifications patch and just changing the um, stiffness to 70. And command full stop is to actually stop our um, composition in the viewer and command R is to render it. So we're just going to copy this so we can use the left arrow key button to go from a zero uh, value in the width of the uh, call image to a um, higher value of 0.59 so it'll go from uh, having uh, going from being nothing to um, wider uh, as you can see here when we press the uh, right arrow key or sorry left arrow key it'll just pop up out of nowhere, um, which is like the end product of what Facebook have, and then pressing the right arrow key to dismiss it. In hindsight, I probably should have used the other arrow keys and switched them around, which would make more sense to dismiss it with the left arrow key, but you can do that yourself. And we're just going to turn on the friction to 8. By turning it down to 8, we get a little bit of a bounce, which uh, looks a little bit better.